So let's look at understanding your text. And we're really going to be dissecting this film, The Rabbit Proof Fence, in a lot of detail. So the steps to understanding your text are as follows. Firstly, we're going to be looking at a plot summary. So what happens in this film? What's the basic content? We're then going to be looking at the author, so in this case, the director of the film, and how their composition has impacted what the film has to say. We'll then be examining the historical context of the film, so some history and background about Aboriginal culture and the way in which Aboriginals have been affected by the white invasion of Australia. We'll then be looking at analysis of specific techniques, so film techniques and the way in which they're used in order to improve the belonging themes in a text. We're then also going to be looking at belonging themes and ideas, so linking this specifically to your area of study belonging. And then finally looking at some reviews and critical opinions in order to give your answer just that little edge, which is really going to make sure you stand out to the marker through your multi-layered and sophisticated approach. So let's start by looking at a plot summary of this film. Now, basically The Rabbit Proof Fence is set in Western Australia during the 1930s. The film begins in the remote town of Jigalong. Now, basically the entire film um, is not set in this town. However, this is where you get the introduction to the scene and where you really start to understand the struggles of these characters which are going to be introduced. Basically what the film involves is sisters Molly and Daisy and their cousin Gracie who live with their mother and grandmother in this town and the way in which once they're taken from that town they aim to get back to it. The town lies on the northern part of the rabbit proof fence. Now the rabbit proof fence is an actual thing in Australia. It was basically exactly what it sounds like, a fence to make sure the rabbits didn't spread across the country but it became a real dividing line down the country and was a way of, in this film, the girls tracking back from their new home to their old home. So what happens in this film is the protector of Western Australian Aborigines, A.O. Neville, orders these three girls to his re-education camp. Now we're going to be looking at the concept of the re-education camp in detail in just a moment. Basically, the children are forcibly taken from Jigalung and then taken to this camp at Moor River. So they're taken from their surroundings and put into a completely new environment. They're, basically, this camp is where the half-castes, so this was the offensive term used to describe children half Aboriginal and half white, live at this camp and are taught to become servants. So the aim was that all their Aboriginality would be taken away from them, bred out, and new white skills would replace these old skills which weren't really considered important anymore. Basically what happens is that the girls decide to walk home. They're unhappy in their surroundings so they decide to escape and decide to move back to their town in order to find that belonging, that sense of family and love and connections which they really felt throughout their childhood and which they don't feel in their new surroundings. However, an Aboriginal tracker called Muju is called to find them. So this is really the complication of the plot. Once they are attempting to escape from Moor River, they're faced with this obstacle of Mudu the tracker, who's trying to find them and bring them back to this terrible environment which they're trying to escape from. The girls basically disguise their tracks and are trying to evade Mudu. So here we're really getting an understanding of the way in which these girls understand the land and are working with the land and using it to their advantage in order to ensure that they survive in these terrible conditions. They're also getting a lot of help from strangers, basically ensuring that they're evading Mudu and making sure they get home to their town and to their mother and grandmother. They eventually find the rabbit proof fence. However, basically what happens is Neville, who is that Aboriginal protector we talked about, realises their idea and send Constable Riggs to find them. So here we get yet another level of complication. They're trying to escape, they're really trying to find their old life again. However, once again, they're faced with the obstacle where the Aboriginal is being faced with the white invasion and the long-term consequences of the white settlement. 
Neville spreads the word that Gracie's mother is waiting for them at Will Una. So basically what's happening here is Neville is trying to trick Gracie into disappearing from the others and going to this town where she can be trapped. He's basically hoping that he can lure the girls to this town, trap them and put them back in the camp. So he's pulling out a lot of techniques in order to find the girls when Moody the Tracker was failing at this point. Gracie finds this out through a stranger who's pretending to be helping her. We know that the stranger isn't helping her but is instead trying to basically lure her back to the awful camp. And she breaks off from the group to go to Waluna by train. So Gracie's leaving her cousins and going to find her mother. And this is a big mistake which is going to have really bad consequences for the girls. Riggs appears and Gracie is recaptured. They realise that they can't do anything about this, Gracie's been taken back into custody. So Molly and Daisy decide to continue on their journey and to get back home so maybe they can help Gracie once they get home and they're getting help from the people around them. After weeks following the fence, the sisters near Jigalong and they're basically guided by chanting. So this is really linked to the Aboriginal spirituality and the idea that a connection to Aboriginal religion, the land and the dreaming is really inherently linked to every Aboriginal soul and that this was really helping them get home. So you have this element of Aboriginal religion which is being introduced at this point in time. Unfortunately, Riggs is waiting at the town. However, he's afraid of the town women who have been chanting heavily in the brush. He's getting this sort of air of terror and it's very like a sinister scene where he's faced with this Aboriginal ritual which he doesn't understand and this really terrifies him. He's frightened away by the mother and the grandmother who basically appear with a sharpened stick out of the brush. So here we get a resolution, Riggs is scared away, and this seems like it's going to be a really positive thing. However, the epilogue shows recent footage of Molly and Daisy. So here we get the way in which the film isn't just fictional, not just a movie, but it is actually based on a true story. So Molly and Daisy are real people, this actually happened to them, and this footage at the end is a really good indication of the fact that it is true, and it's really bringing it home to the viewer that these awful things actually happened, so it's quite shocking to see. Gracie died having never got back to Jigalong, so this is what you find out in this section, and it's really saddening to the viewer that Gracie and never managed to get home to her cousins even though her cousins were successful in finding home and finding their mother and grandmother. Molly had her own two daughters however sadly you find out that the three of them were taken back to Moor River. So this is all happening all over again you're getting the idea that we never learned from our mistakes and this terrible oppression was continuing even though she managed to escape it's all happening for her all over again. You also learn that Molly escaped with one of her daughters, Annabelle, however she was taken away a second time and lost. So you really have this tragic story where a society is never learning from their mistakes and really just never getting to the end of this oppressive and really terrible cycle for the Aboriginal people. So it's quite a sad movie at the end of the day. 